we will start this gentle and deep working slings myofascial training practice in a supine position. If you like to transition onto the floor with me, you can take a basic long sit, hold on to the back of your knees, pull the heels gently towards the sit bones, release the pull, engage your pelvic floor and abdominal muscles, tilt the pelvis back, curl the spine evenly. And then you slide your feet along the floor, pelvic floor, abdominals fully engaged. As you are rolling back, your arms are lifting the legs and then you are rolling all the way back into restful pose. As the name says, you completely relax. Step one foot after the other onto the floor. The legs are in a hip distance and parallel alignment. And then you engage pelvic floor and abdominals again. Once again, you tilt the pelvis back, pelvic curl. Lift the pelvis off the floor and then peel the spine away from the mat. If you like to work with imagery, you can imagine the network of fascia around your spine as a suspension system that supports and carries your spine while the muscles move it. You're now in a shoulder bridge position. Take the massage domes, place them beneath the pelvis with the flat side up and then roll down letting the spinal bones be suspended in their fascial support system. And then you settle the pelvis on the domes. Rest your arms on the floor, let the knees fall together, step the feet apart about mat distance apart. And then you slide one leg against the other, let the pelvis rotate along, and you are coming back to the starting position, which is an A stance, and then slide the other leg against <laughs> the opposite and back to A stance. And so this is a supine hip release with A legs and you find a fluid rhythm. So this should be a joyful, fluid movement that brings fluidity into the hip joints and I mean deeply within the hip joints and also around them. Because the your mid upper back also rotates along, you're already mobilizing your spine and also enhancing the fluidity in the fascial structures around your spine. Let's do this one more time to each side. You can increase the range of motion if you like, opening the sides of the hips as well. And then you're back in a stance, walk your feet together. The legs are once again hip distance and parallel. Maybe you have to reposition the props slightly. And then place your hands onto the lower belly and engage your pelvic floor and abdominal muscles. So you feel a tensioning underneath your hands, the lower belly draws away from your hands, and there is inner stability. Your lower back is in its natural alignment, neither arched nor curled. You keep the muscular activity steady, float one leg into a tabletop position, find a 90 degree angle, float the leg down, Toes to heel, you are rolling the foot down, press it slightly onto the floor, float your other leg to tabletop, 90 degree angle, you float the leg down, again toes to heel, press down slightly, exhalation leg float, shorter inhalation at the top, and then exhalation floating the leg down, you inhale, roll the foot down, press lightly, and change side in your own rhythm a few more times. So it is absolutely wonderful, simply profound core stabilization exercise has the deepest effect when you work with greatest ease. So let's say 
on a scale zero to 10, 10 is really hard work in your pelvic floor, abdominals, in your back. Here, you want to go really low. Can you make it a three on your scale? Maybe it's a four, maybe it's a five. Whatever it is, it is your lowest number. So you have the deepest effect, stabilizing your body from within, finding the balance between instability and fixation. So you are in a dynamically stabilized position. Let's go one more time. Float the leg up to tabletop and now pause. Now you engage more. Go to an eight. Maybe it's a nine. You float the second leg to tabletop. Connect the legs. Lower the feet. Let the lower legs dangle. And then you draw the knees towards the chest. You let gravity take over. And then you move the knees away from the chest. Briefly tap with your toes on the floor. And then once again, you let the knees roll towards the chest. So we are moving slowly at the moment. Your abdominal activity is fairly low again, focused on the lower belly, just at the very beginning, drawing a little bit back. And then you let the weight of the legs tilt the pelvis, curl the spine. You let the spinal bones <laughs> be suspended in their fascial support system. So trust your fascia. Your back here is in a good place. And so the fascia tensions. And then as the back muscles engage, there is a change also in the fascia. But it always supports your back. Now, if you feel well supported, let's add a more dynamic rhythm. Double rhythm bounce. Brief toe tap, double exhalation, followed by a slower inhalation. And now we are aiming to elasticize the fascia of the back. And this elasticity also gives you greater tensile strength and adaptability. It should feel fun. And it's highly beneficial, not just here on the mat, but in everyday life. So then your back can afford the unusual movement that maybe creates discomfort otherwise. So let's do one more. And then step your feet onto the floor. Once again, hip distance and parallel. Ground the feet, tilt the pelvis back. So this is muscular activity pelvic curl roll up, muscular activity and fascial support into the shoulder bridge position. Remove the massage domes from beneath your pelvis and then roll down slowly. Trust your fascia. And then center the pelvis, center the spine. Raise your arms up towards the ceiling. Float one leg into tabletop. Engage more strongly through pelvic floor and abdominals to stay stable when floating your second leg into tabletop. Connect the legs. Lift head and shoulders off the floor. Curl up. Hold on behind the knees. Curl up a little further. Press your legs into the hands, basic rolling up, land on your feet, forehead or crown of the head towards the knees, spine stretch, and then you pull the heels gently towards the sit bones, you curl up. Cross the legs, roll over the knees into a four-point kneeling position. And then from four point kneeling, you curl the tailbone under, you lift up from the pubic bone, curl into a cat, press your hands away from the body to shift the upper body back into a child's pose. And from child's pose, you glide forward, lying on your belly. Take a massage ball, place the massage ball beneath your sternum, and then lie down in prone, resting your forehead on the floor and arranging your arms in the capital E position. The elbows are about at shoulder height. The fingertips point forward. 
bring your awareness to your pelvis, engage lightly again in your center. So think about the tree activity that you had before, light and steady. Reach one leg back, lift it just off the floor, reach further back and then rest the leg on the floor. Slide the other leg back, lift it a little bit, reach further back, rest it on the floor and from now on you keep the legs as uninvolved as possible. Bring your awareness to the sternum and with your next inhalation Reach your sternum forward and upward, lifting the forehead off the floor, very gently pulling the elbows back. Exhalation, roll back down, rest your forehead on the floor. You have released the gentle pull of your elbows. Inhalation, elongating the spine, reaching forward and upward into an arch. With your exhalation, gliding back down. As you inhale and you gently pull your elbows back, you just want to facilitate a feeling of elongation in the spine. And then you release the pull and that's facilitating the adaptability of the spine as you roll down. Let's do this one more time. Gliding forward and upward, also with a feeling of expansiveness in the chest. And then a melting over the ball as you roll down. Now this time we just go up. So a wide feeling in the chest, a long feeling in the spine. You pause and you let the breath flow and then pull your right elbow gently back, turn your head, look over the left to the left, release the pull, center the head. Inhalation, left elbow pulls back, turn the head to the right. And release with your exhalation center. Inhalation, right elbow pulls gently back. And again, you're turning the head into the opposite direction. In your own rhythm a few more times. So the gentle pull of the elbow can facilitate a feeling of the sternum is swinging from side to side. Very, very gentle. It's a micro movement where the sternum turns into the same direction as the head. And let's see this one more time to each side. So this is not only strengthening your back, strengthening your neck, in a really positive manner, also creating more limberness in the neck. It is also <laughs> opening or mobilizing, that's how I need to say it, roll down the ribcage in a very gentle, multidimensional manner. Let the sternum or the soft tissue across the sternum melt over the ball. Take a few deep, slow breaths, expansive in the back, melting in the front. And then you remove the ball from beneath the sternum. This is also a simply profound exercise. It really has a deep effect, like a deep positive effect on the body. Well beyond what might be apparent like the back strength. So take your hands to either side of the ribs. Engage more strongly to your center, pelvic floor and abdominals. Push up, push back into a child's pose. And then interlace your hands behind your neck. And with your hands very gently open the back of the neck. And once again your breath is slow and deep. 
expansive in the back, soft in the front. Then you can release your hands, extend your arms, spread your fingers. The hands are about shoulder distance apart. Curl up into a cat position. Center the pelvis, center the spine in four-point kneeling. Tuck the toes under. Shift the body back. Lift your knees just off the floor. And then extend the legs as far as you like into inverted V. Walk your feet and your hands towards one another. Forward fold leg stretch. Extend the legs as far as you like. And then start to roll up. Engaging through pelvic floor and abdominals first. Then you let your back muscles take over, elongating your spine until you are standing tall. And then you can take a chair and also the massage domes close by. And a small ball. So I'm using a trigger ball. You can use a squash ball or also your hands. The ball goes just beside your feet onto the floor. Center yourself on the chair. And then relax your arms and just for a moment tune into your shoulders. How are your shoulders right now? How broad does your chest feel? And then you raise your arms overhead with arm circle. And then arm circle down. How does the shoulder movement feel? How smooth does the movement feel in your shoulder joints? How does your neck feel? What is the lightness or heaviness of your arms? How long do your arms feel? Like, can you feel your arms all the way to the fingertips? One more arm circle. How is the spaciousness? Like, what's the space you can reach with your arm circle? How expansive is it? And then you can reach your arms overhead one more time. Active forward fold. Fold over the legs, release. Take the small ball and roll up into a centered sitting position. You take the ball with your right hand and then Find your collarbone. So if you go from the sternum to the side, you have your collarbone. And then you go inward a little bit and just start rolling along the collarbone. Go like, ah, that's the length of my collarbone. Let's do one more. So you are rolling along the collarbone, its underside, that's what you feel like. And at the end, you come across a bony protrusion. It's not part of the collarbone, but it's usually quite prominent. It's like, hmm, that's the end of my massage movement here. Now, instead of rolling, we are going to stroke. So you press the ball inward in the inner third of your collarbone, slightly upward. And then you start to turn your arm out and in in an easeful manner. If you feel discomfort in your arm, in your chest, of any kind really, you just back off, press less and just move to a different spot. And now you are stroking the tissue outward. So good grip and then you roll out. And you're not rolling out, you're pushing out and then you're rolling back in. And once again, you press inward, slightly upward. You add the easeful rotation of your shoulder. You turn the arm out, then you lift it up. And at the same time, you press the ball out, facilitating a feeling of length in your collarbone. Release, 
roll in, press, a little bit upward, lift, turn, out, lift the arm, stroke outward, and now move into a long side bend. And back to center, and you're rolling the ball back. Let's do this one more time, so you're pressing in, slightly up, unwind any unnecessary tension, turn the arm out, reach out and up with the arm, side bend, give your collarbone extra length by sense and release. Then you hold the ball lightly with your right hand, maybe you already feel a difference in your arms, you can do an arm circle, an active forward fold, Ball goes onto the floor and roll up. And just notice the length of your arms as you're rolling up. Center, arm circle. Arm circle down. How does your left arm feel in comparison to the right? Lightness. Smoothness of the movement, range, reach. <laughs> One more time. Active forward fold. Take the ball into your left hand, roll up. Find your sternum, find your collarbone. Go a little bit out and then roll along the collarbone. Find the bony protrusion at the end. Roll back one more time. Go like mm, soft underside of the collarbone. This is what rolling feels like. And then you go in again. Press in, up, turn the arm. And then this is what stroking feels like. So by sense, you're taking the tissue outward, facilitating a feeling of length in your collarbone width across the chest. Release the arm, roll in again, press, push, spiral. Turn the arm out, reach it up as you press the ball outward. And now at the end, there's just this ever so gentle sense of lift that you give with the ball. So once again, you press, then you spiral. So you're contacting several layers of muscles and fascia here. Turn the arm out, reach it up. And then let's add a side bend and release. We'll do this one more time. Now with this small massage movement that really can have a very big effect, we are massaging the muscles like pectoral muscles here. Turn out and reach up the fascia and we're aiming to go deep. And so sometimes the, the massage itself and the depth is creating a change. And then there's also the sensory change that we create of opening the chest, creating width. So you can relax your arms now, raise your arms overhead with an arm circle, active forward fold, place the ball away and you can already prepare the domes on either side of your feet and you roll up slowly and let's go into arm circle again and tune in and feel if something changed what changed of course i'm always um 
aspiring to a positive change, greater lightness in the arms, more fluidity in the movement, maybe farther reach, more easeful pace. And if any of this happened, absolutely wonderful. And if it didn't, that's okay too. You know, things don't need to happen here and now. The massage itself is a, a really positive experience for the body. So feel good about what you did regardless of the outcome at the moment. Um, sometimes good things take time. They actually often do. So now the legs, you can, uh, before you go into parallel leg alignment, take the domes closer, a uh, distance that suits you. Hip distance is always a good place. And then place your toes onto the dome. So once again, you sit right on top of your sit bones. Your spine is easily elongated. And we go for a walk. And you can do this slowly. You can do it dynamically. It really doesn't matter. So you give the underside of your toes, of the balls of your feet a massage here, a stimulus. We mobilize the feet. We mobilize the ankles. And of course, a little bit the knees and the hips. Then I love this part. So you stomp with your heels, so you're in flex. You're stimulating the edge of your heel. This is the base of support for the back of your body. And sometimes we don't have the clearest sense of that part of the body. So we bring it to into our awareness and it's fun. It's kind of wriggling tension out of the thigh muscles. Then you go midfoot, can also do some <laughs> easy walking movement, and then you settle the feet on the dome, so midfoot, hands onto the thighs, light pressure onto the domes, grow a little taller, engage through your center, and then exhale, curl. You're pressing lightly onto the domes. Stay in curl, roll forward, spine stretch. So you shift the weight forward, more pressure on the domes, exhalation, center the pelvis and spine. You're in active forward fold, press the feet onto the domes and lift yourself up, lighten the pressure. Exhalation, curl, light pressure. Inhalation, spine stretch, more pressure. Exhalation, reach, a little bit more pressure, lengthen. And then push firmly to lift yourself up. Curl again. So it's a lighter massage. Roll forward. It's a firmer massage, it goes deeper. You reach, maybe go a little bit deeper, and then you push up, it goes really deep. Let's do this one more time. Now, while you're doing a whole lot of good for your feet, you also bring ease to your back, strength into your abdominals, and strength into your back. Push up. And then you can step off the domes, arm circle, active forward fold, place the domes out of the way, and then move your feet into a hip distance alignment again, and roll up. A little bit more narrow and or wider is good too, it's just a guide center and then you take your right leg out and you are in a angle sit. Elongate your spine, revolve the sternum slightly forward, release your left arm and then reach your left arm overhead, side stretch to the right, rest your right forearm on the thigh. Now you can press the forearm onto the thigh and feel the side of the rib cage fan open. With your top arm, start to reach down, turn the sternum towards the floor, feel the back of the rib cage spiral open, and then left arm overhead, the side of the rib cage is really open, and then domino. You lower the arm, 
the ribs gently close, the open spine closes, the opposite, opposite side opens, and then domino, lower the arm, inhalation into long side stretch, exhalation spiraling down, inhalation side stretch, with your exhalation, it's a very slow, enjoyable domino. With your inhalation, it's a side bend. And then you exhale again slowly, domino. Repeat the sequence one more time. It's an absolutely beautiful multidimensional movement that mobilizes the shoulder, the ribs, the spine, brings glide and therefore greater movement ease into the fascial structures. And it is also nourishing the fascia, meaning greater health. And in the center, take the left leg to the side. So you're sitting sideways, once again in a centered alignment. Raise your arms forward and upward with the arm arc. Inhalation, spiraling twist to the left, let the breath flow. Right hand against the outside of the left knee. Inhalation, press the hand against the knee. Exhalation, release. As you press the hand against the knee, the spine spirals up and around. So this is like pulling a bowstring. Your arm is creating the movement of the spine and you're elastically lengthening the fascia, allowing it to recoil. Now we can play with the tension in the bowstring. So the elasticized fascia by turning the palm of the right hand forward, reaching the arm slightly up. So you go a little bit higher with every spiraling twist. Let's do this two more times. The hand is also involved, so you spread the fingers and then you pause, let the arm swing forward and backward. Exhalation, forward swing, inhalation, backward swing. It's a dynamic, rhythmical movement where the arm leads and the spine follows. Let's do one more. And then both arms swing overhead Spiraling twist towards the right and dynamic arm pendulum. Exhalation forward swing, inhalation back swing and your spine follows along. So the art, can you keep your spine fully elongated yet let it be spiraled by the arm pendulum? So wonderful combination of doing and allowing to happen. One more arm pendulum back forward, alternate, once to the left and once to the right. Last one, last series. <laughs> and then you center, open your arms, turn forward. We are going into the same curl and active forward fold series that we did before. This time we are starting with an arch. So first you elongate your spine, inhale, lift the sternum. With your exhalation, curl. With your inhalation, you stay in curl, bring the top of your head closer to the knees. With your exhalation, you center pelvis and spine in the active forward fold. Inhale into an arch. And you center. Take the left leg out to the side into an angle sit. Pivot the sternum slightly forward. Release the right arm. Reach it overhead. Reach into a long side stretch. Support yourself with the left forearm. Press down so you give yourself extra lift in your upper body. And now again, your gesture arm is leading. It's like a slow domino. 
by feeling the rib cage follows the arm, the spine follows the rib cage. The arm leads, the ribs follow, the spine follows. And then the domino, arm leads, ribs follow, spine follows, side bend into the domino. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Slowest, longest exhalation. Inhale is a little shorter. The exhalation is slower one more time. So in Sling's myofascial training, we are calling this an outside-in movement. The arm leads, then the movement travels inward to the spine and beyond or to different systems. So this is absolutely wonderful for vitalizing the inner organs. So it's literally outside in, from muscles, fascia to inner organs. Then you can turn sideways. Once again, you establish a centered Sitting position, arm arc, spiraling twist, left hand to the outside of the right knee, inhalation, spiraling, exhalation, release. Remember, it is your left arm that pulls the bowstring. The bowstring being the fascia of your oblique abdominals and deep spinal muscles. So elasticizing them for greater movement efficiency and resilience. Now let's add tension to the bowstring by turning the left hand, it's the right hand, forward and reaching it gradually higher up towards the ceiling. Maybe you also feel a bit of a lift in your body. So that would be absolutely wonderful. Let's do this one more time. And then you pause and then you let the arm swing. And <laughs> you let the ribs and the spine follow. In and out. A few more times in your most uplifting rhythm. Now you swing both arms overhead and spiraling twist to the opposite side. You let the arm swing and again you let the rest of the upper body follow. The lower body is relatively still and it's uninvolved. So this movement too, it has a wonderful effect on the joints, on fascia, and it also goes deep to the inner organ, so vitalizing in a different way. Both arms swing overhead. Let's do it alternating. <laughs> Coordination, really good for the brain. So we go one more time each side. And then both arms stay overhead arm circle down. You can turn forward again. I will stay seated sideways so you can see the arm movement more easily. Let's do one more time the exercise we did before. You inhale into an arch. You exhale into an even long curl. Inhale into the spine stretch. You exhale into active forward fold, center. If you like, add your arms, arm arc first, and then arch, V arms. Exhalation, arm arc, curl, fluidly into the spine stretch. Exhalation, arm circle overhead, active forward fold. Inhalation, reach up into the arch. Exhalation, even long curl with the arm arc smoothly into the spine stretch. Arm circle, active forward fold one more time. reaching up into the arm arc and center. 
I hope you feel invigorated from head to toes, the outside in and the inside out.